Hi everybody and welcome to art class with Zoe. Today we're going to be painting this lovely little picture of a chickadee in a blossom tree. As you can see I've drawn him out already and I'm just mixing some purple which is um, a cooler purple of cadmium red with ultramarine and I'm just taking the edge the point of a number eight brush and just gently putting in the shadows of the white blossom flowers so you've got the light coming from the left and I'm just putting in just touches and lines on the edge of the petals but not all the way around. Some purple is on the edge of the petals and some is in the, are in the middle to give that cup-like feature. And then I'm adding a little bit of ultramarine blue to give a little bit of variation as well. Take your time and look at the shape of the flower. I always find that that's really important with flowers. As long as you've got their shape, then you're halfway there. Now you can start mixing some green. This is a mid-tone green. And what I would suggest is if you are actually using any green straight from the tube or the pan, always mix a little something like blue, yellow or brown. So I've got a uh, sap green and I've mixed a little bit of ultramarine with it. Otherwise, the green will be become, it will look flat rather than d have a little bit more depth. Mm -hmm. And you want to actually have the leaves, different shapes of the leaves as well. And you can put in the branch. Now we're going to go on to the little bird himself with that gorgeous little head and body. I have put on the head. You can either use paint gray or black for the hood. And I've used burnt sienna for his body, a light wash. As you can see, the black has slightly um, gone into where the wet paint is with the burnt sienna. But I actually don't mind that. That's, to me, a happy accident. And I would definitely leave the white areas. You know, patience is a virtue, especially in watercolour. So just wait Otherwise, you don't want to overpaint it. And also remember, use your brush in different ways. So you can use the side of the brush or for this bit with the wings, you can use the very tip of the brush for texture and different feathers in his wings as it's going on. And what I've done is I've used a little bit a mix of Payne's Grey with Burnt Sienna to make a darker brown, unless you've got something like a Burnt Umber or Sepia, that's also good as well. And you can start adding the different characteristics of the chickadee, so you've got more feathers and the tail feather in there as well. I'm using Payne's Grey as well. And I do know that they are not always... They will say don't use black in paints in watercolour, but, you know, rules are meant to be broken. So if you want to, you can, especially if you're going to be painting a pen and watercolour wash, because you're using going to be using black pen afterwards anyway. That's just my theory. Feel free to disagree, but I will have a go and see if you like it yourself. So you want to start preparing your paints for the background and also while you're painting preparing the paints don't forget to mix a little bit of darker yellow ochre for the center of the flowers and just add a few little dots where the shadow will be in the middle of the flower so you can give it sort of you know it's got that rounded center so you can give it that sort of texture going around and then you're adding just a little bit of shadow broken brush strokes to the side of the branch as well in a dark brown you don't have to be heavy 
can just be a light and sketchy. You can also add little details here and there. And don't forget to stand back from the painting. And you can also, a good tip is to look at it in the mirror as well. And that will give you a good view to see what's going right or anything that needs to be dealt with. Another good tip is if you want to soften any lines, as I have done on his breast and around his head, and actually add a little bit, a tiny bit of shadow to his the white area on his face. Take a damp brush, clean the brush, take all the excess fluid off so you've got a damp brush and then you can just add a little bit of shadow to the white areas or soften the area around his chest as well. Then we want to move on to the background and I have mixed different shades of ultramarine, Payne's grey and burnt umber and I have gone on with a um, a good brush that carries is carries quite a lot of water onto that and I've actually taken I'm actually putting this wet on to dry actually I'm not wetting it the paper so that I'm actually using bold big fluid um, strokes of with a lot of paint and then I can dampen certain areas with more water. And I, you can see here I'm making some stronger and darker with, and then some lighter as we go up to the top. And I'm building up slowly, but I'm also building in contrasts. So you've got the white flowers being brought out by the darker, stronger background. It really makes them pop out as well. But please remember you do not want to use the same background technique on all of it because some of it will be darker and some will be lighter. So for example, around the head where he's got a dark, this dark hood, you want to have a lighter background, but around his chest where it's whiter, you want to have a little bit darker background. So it's quite tricky, but as long as you keep that in mind, you want to, because you really want the birds to actually pop out because that's the focal point. Keep building up. If you want to soften some areas, as I said, dampen the brush. Keep going around. It's wet on dry as well. As you can see, I'm moving around his head and adding some bits of blue ultramarine paint and I'm going to make that head darker there as well so that it really has a good contrast. That's where I've cleaned the brush and with a damp brush and I'm just softening it on the top left so you have that variation as well. And don't forget that the paint will only go where you've put water or where there's wet paint. So you don't have to worry about the white flowers or the buds. The paint won't seep into those areas because you haven't painted them. There's no water there. Otherwise, it will. Um, if, for example, you made a mistake and put water, say, over a petal, um, that paint might bleed into it. I'm thinking, actually, that the flowers need more contrast to pop out a little bit more. So I'm adding a little bit of ultramarine with Payne's Grey and I'm very carefully with a smaller brush going around the edges of the flower and the bird, the little chickadee. Don't you just love that name, chickadee? And you can add some more colours if you want, a little bit of brown, but don't add too many variations of colour. Stick to the, to the limited palette, that's very important. Otherwise, um, if you add a new colour at this late stage, it will stand out like uh, you'll really notice it as well. I really then at this stage really started to add some really strong dark colours, especially on the right. I would not have added this around his head, the chickadee's head, because otherwise 
Can you imagine if I had put that dark area on top right around his head? It would absolutely, the bird, little bird would be lost and we wouldn't want him to be lost, would we? I keep going, moving around this area patiently. You can take your time and you can do this in certain sections and areas. I'm putting a lighter wash again, but still building up. So you just want a little bit darker wash around his breast. And this is all that's coming down is to contrast and actually which areas you need to kind of be brought out. So contrast will really bring out the little bird, otherwise he'll be lost. But as I said, you really need to make sure that you don't go that near his head where the dark hood is, because otherwise... He'll be lost in the in the background. And you want you want that mottled effect of wet and wet. You can add a little bit of clean the brush, wet it, and then you can see it's bleeding and it's uh, very nicely on the left, which I really like. And again, I'm doing a little bit more darkness around the top white flower. And then I'm going to clean the brush, dampen it. Can you see that? And then I'm going around his head so it's not as dark as the rest of it. Being very, very careful around this area. And you can still add little bits of color if you so wish. And it'll give that sort of foliage type of uh, look and a natural look that you want. Now, excitingly, we're going to add a pen. So this is a waterproof pen and we're going to, I usually use between a 0.5 and 0.8 pen. And you can see I've already started to work on his head and around the flower edges. As you said, I'm bringing in the shape of the flower is so important. Can you see how careful I'm kind of trying to be with the petals? And so these are quite sort of fluid, long strokes. But with his hair, I just want to come back to the little chickadee. You can see on the head and on the hood, I used short, sharp strokes rather than long ones. And also in the center of the flower, I used little dots. Can you see that? So I'm using little short, sharp, sharp. Oh, that's a tongue twister. Little short, sharp strokes <laughs> with a pen. And keep building up. And now you can see that the contrast of the head. And don't forget, watercolour actually dries 50% lighter. So it looked like I was doing a lot in the background. But actually, you can see how it's really dried quite um quite much lighter and when I add the pen to his head and put a little bit of texture on his body it's really making him stand out strongly with his little strokes don't forget to use the pen in different ways and use different types of strokes and don't forget to experiment as well So I keep building up the wings and the tail. And we're in the final stages, excuse the wiggly camera. And do keep standing back and looking at it in a mirror because you don't want to overwork it. You just wanted to just make sure that the chickadee is the is the focus, which is coming out really nicely now.
And I think that we are nearly done. You can see the nice variations in the background now. And I haven't overworked the flowers. Those have been kept very light white. I've kept the contrast. You've got some very light washes of blue and purple in the petals. And then I've really bought out, I keep adding to more tech, more feathers and textures and really building up the hood on his little head. He's very cute. I just want to take him home, <laughs> but he must fly, fly free. And again, like with the shape of a flower, it's the same with a bird. You need to get the shape right. So when you draw it out first, don't forget, you've got to really make sure that you've drawn it out in the right uh, shape so that the head and the body are in the right proportions. The little beak is the right shape. Otherwise, you know, bird watchers will not be happy. And he'll look up out of proportion. And you don't need to cover him more. You can leave some of that lovely wet wash. Some of it is very loose and some of it, you can see the texture on his wings and his tail. Sorry about the wiggly camera work. Just add a little bit of shadow underneath his tummy just to bring that out, just against the background. And I think that we are nearly, very nearly done. This is where you have to tell yourself to stop fiddling and stand away from the picture. And here we have a little chickadee and a blossom tree. I hope you enjoyed and don't forget to subscribe to Art Class with Zoe. Bye.